last in, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in one of my classes now. Like I said, I just did 36 hours of psychology. I, just, I discovered that I'm a sick puppy and I need therapy. <laughs> Amen. But I also discovered there's a few more that I'm looking at very strongly that need some help too. Look, I'm looking at you very strongly. <laughs> Look, no, God, God is good. <laughs> God, God is good all the time. Um, Y'all just stand up. Y'all stand up. Oh, we got kind of sat down too early. Y'all stand up. Just turn around. Just my high five, low five, low five, something. Just tell me that you love me. I've been knowing Brother Jim Finney since about 1997. Back when both of us were skinnier and had little gray hair. <coughs> well, I had a little gray hair, but not as, not, not as much as I got now. And I, matter of fact, I skipped the gray hair. I'm going straight to white. That white is a new gray. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, those with white hair just wear it proud. I mean, we earned it. We earned every strain. That's right. <laughs> Some of us look like holy men. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we're gonna get we're gonna get some of these holy men robes when they come in because they sure do look like holy men. I'm telling you, it's awesome. It's so awesome. Uh, uh, but God is so good. I've been on Brother Jim for quite some time, and and, and uh, he's always 100 percent of the time proving himself to be a genuine man of God who is hungry for God. And his hunger for God's word to himself first and then to others. And you remember we had our, our tent meeting out here several years ago, and Brother Jim uh, carried on the tent meeting. So, uh, Brother Billy, uh, Brother Billy uh, uh, a couple, well, last week he wound up going to, he was already in the nursing home, the boys were looking good in the nursing home, but then they, uh, last week he had to wind up going to the emergency room, and, and things were looking kind of bad there. And, and so uh, when they were talking about, uh, what to do with Brother Billy, uh, uh, Brother Jim texted me, told me he was on the way back from Tennessee. And so it just, it, like I said, it all felt like a glove. It was just God's holy anointing. And how many believe that God, God has divine preeminence in all of our lives? Amen. And he sets you up so many times you don't even realize it. He sets you up and you don't even think, have any, any, any idea. You're thinking something bad's happening and what God is doing is putting you on a launching pad for something great to happen. And so here we go. We've got a launching pad here. Uh, just like Brother Billy, bless his heart. He, he's, he is uh, uh, definitely, uh, unless God works a miracle, he is definitely going to meet him within the day or so. But the, the awesome thing about it is, listen carefully. Right now, he's in our presence and God's presence. When he closes his eyes in death, he will open them again immediately. He'll never lose consciousness and he'll be in the presence of Almighty God. He won't have our presence, but he'll be in God's direct presence. Right now, God's, God's with us here, but he'll be in God's direct presence. And can you hear the celebration? Welcome, well done, my good and faithful servant. Wow. Just six months ago, he was cutting grass. Yeah. I was trying to talk. Billy and I, mean, uh, 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 Eddie and I were talking. Uh, it, Billy called it green therapy. Yeah. He'd go to his lawn and he would cut the grass. So I was trying to write him a song. Green therapy is the place to be. <laughs> cutting grass gives me relief to me. <laughs> well, he never got a chance to hear that. But yesterday, in the middle of all this, he was still... Still talking and still just being Billy. And, and I thank God for this man. This man here has been a big inspiration in my life. And I don't love anybody in this church who hasn't been an inspiration to. So, so what's getting ready to take place in transition may hurt us. But I promise you, it's going to be the crowning event of what he's been looking for for all these years. And I can hear him say, do not weep for me. Whatever you because now I get my chance to see my Savior face to face. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Now, in the middle of all that, like I said, Brother Jim called. 
and I, or text me, and we text back and forth. He texts me where he's all over the place, and he'll text me back and forth from time to time. Sometimes we just text a hello, and sometimes we text a conversation. <laughs> Good old conversation. Brother Jim's an awesome friend of mine. Been knowing him for years. Uh, I trust him totally. And I know that we, 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 we have uh, kind of been through the same school a lot of things. And I'm going to let him explain what I'm telling him right now. We've both had a chance to encounter some things, same things in our lives. But it has not hurt us. It's made us stronger. And I thank God for that. Brother Jim Coyne. Y'all give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Brother. Let me step up. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, August the 22nd, my wife was promoted to heaven. I was out in uh, West Tennessee when it happened. She, I conducted her uh, funeral a week later in uh, West Tennessee. So that's been, been, a, been a very big change in my life. That's an understatement. But I know where she is. I think we got some echo here, so we're going to have to tone this down or something, or I'm getting an echo. I've been preaching for 40 years. At least 40 years. I've seen a lot of things take place. I'll, I'll give one miracle that just took place, oh, let's see, about a month and a half ago. I've been out in uh, Greenville, Texas, right above Dallas, and if you're an evangelist, you're traveling, and you got all this crazy weather in the Midwest, you got tornadoes, you got hail coming down, you don't know which way you can go sometimes, so after I got through that church there for a few services, about a month and a half ago or so, <laughs> I thought, well, I'm just going to stay in the motel, and I'll eventually get down toward Houston, at least I, I can get out of this crazy weather, and uh, but the Lord just led me to go across the state of Louisiana, and I finally ended up in Assembly of God Church, a place called Aberdeen, Mississippi. And I know the pastor, I knew her in California, her and her husband, since she was 14. And she's been to church there for, I guess, about a year. <clears throat> this is a miracle that took place. And I'm not going to preach anything this morning. I am a preacher, I'm a God called preacher. Anybody's called to preach, I definitely am. I want to talk about doing exploits in the name of Jesus. How many believe it's time the church starts doing exploits? But anyway, this is the miracle that took place on the Sunday night, two services at that Assembly of God Church in Aberdeen, Mississippi. I had people stick their fingers in their ears. Those that were having difficulties hearing that had hearing impairment, uh, that had ringing in the ear, or no hearing at all. And uh, long story short, we had a man that had 80% of his hearing in his right ear was gone. He had worked with jet engines. There's a uh, Columbus, Mississippi, just about 14 miles below. There's an uh, Air Force base. So I presume that he'd been working on some of those jet engines, and he lost most of his hearing in that right ear. So I'm having him come up. You know, if you're going to be like a big evangelist, you've got, to, you know, you've got to have the style and all that. Of course, I'm kidding. And I had him come up there, and I was going to have him get on the microphone to tell me what God had done for him. All he did was stick his finger in his ear, and I counted to three. I saw people just pull that, their finger out of your ear, and God began to do miracles. He didn't lay hands on them. And uh, I couldn't even get him to talk in English. He was talking in this strange, uh, unknown language to me anyway. And God had restored his hearing. 80% of it was gone. And God just completely did it like that. Can you shout amen? amen? 
And that's just one of many, many miracles. In fact, a little bit further down, we had a man several years ago, and I just had a revival there about a year ago. This had to be five years ago. So I don't know if there's some deaf people here this morning, but just get ready. If you have a hearing impairment, this man was in the service. I think I've shared this with you, but this is a new discovery. This was an exploit done in the service. Now, I believe the medical science and hospitals are great, but how many believe God's people are to have advances or exploits in the name of Jesus? In fact, the Bible tells me in Daniel eleven thirty two, the last part of that verse, but the people, everybody say, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Come on, raise your hands and thank God. That's what he's promised. Do exploits. I looked the word up. Uh, King James Version or most versions, that's in italics. So it's not an original manuscript or it's the word that the nearest word they could use translated into our uh, Elizabethan English. But this is what it means. It literally means to do things heroically Things that you've never done before to go places and to do things, territory that you've never trodden upon. That's just part of the meaning. Heroic deeds, quests. And so this man, about a year ago, gave me this testimony. About four years prior to this, we had preached in an afternoon service, Sunday afternoon. Now we're having a revival in this place called uh, Rainsville, Alabama. And, uh, during that time, I think it's before I even began preaching, I had people come up that were deaf or had hearing problems, and God opened his ear. He didn't have any hearing. I believe it was in his left ear. And when God healed him, he started putting his hand over his ear and saying it's too loud. He was unaccustomed. His auditory system was of use. Well, he didn't have an auditory system in his hearing in that left ear canal. And uh, even while I was preaching that, that afternoon, he kept on putting his hand over his ear. And he had a ponytail, can you shout him in? So you know he belonged to the Paul Revere family. Come on, some of you historical people that know uh, history. And uh, he was putting his hands over his ear. Well, a year ago, I, I had had revival in that church, a series of meetings since 2005, on the way out to California. And uh, so I had a revival about a year ago at that same church. It's now called the Sand Mountain region of uh, Alabama above uh, uh, Birmingham. And this is what he told me. I asked him if he's still healed. This is several years later. He was. And he said, prior to the time when he got his healing, he was out in Atlanta, Georgia. And he got around some sort of gasoline explosion and it decimated his ear. I didn't even know that. So God put a brand new eardrum inside there. Does that make you happy? Yes. You see, the Lord is in the healing business and he can put parts of your body. He can give you a brand new heart. He can give you brand new blood, blood vessels. He can give you a brand new liver. He can give you brand new lungs. He can give you brand new bones because the word of God says in the 16th chapter, of, of, of Mark verse 15, Jesus said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let me get down here where you are. I hate to be up on the platform. Hey, Jesus is on the platform. We want to exalt him. Can you shout amen? amen. But Jesus said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Do we have any believers here this morning? Yes, have you been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost yes. to seal your testimony that you're risen with Christ and you identify in his heavenly place through his death, burial, and resurrection? Anybody here you know you're saved, you're ready to go to heaven, raise your hands and just start thanking God that your name is written in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, he doesn't stop there in Mark 16. 
You've heard me say this. One thing I learned going to Bible college years ago, simply God in Southeastern, we had some people that used to go to the same church I went to. I know they're deceased. Used to attend this church. They were from the Lakeland area. Uh, but one thing I learned at Southeastern University now is this. This is the biggest theological word. Now I'm joking, but I mean it stayed with me. We've preached Matthew 28 as the great commission, great commission, and that is only part of the truth. The great commission is not only found in Mark, uh, Matthew 28, but it's also found in Luke 16. Can you shout it? At uh, Mark 16. It's also found in the 24th chapter of Luke. It's also found in the first chapter of Acts. And when you put it all together, that's what you would call the great composite commission. During the 40 days that Jesus appeared and showed himself alive after many infallible proofs. And so, Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And, everybody say and. Amen. I'm quoting from verse 15 all the way up to verse 19. And, I love the ands of the Bible. Don't you love the ands? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, the Bible, with that, the, the authors of these books, when they use the word and, it's not only a conjunction, but it will shock you. And, in other words, I'm not through yet. You're going to get saved. You're going to get baptized in water. And these signs shall follow who? Them that believe. For years, Brother David, and I, I appreciate uh, Brother David meeting him uh, a number of years ago, many years ago. In fact, you know, 19, was 98 when I moved down here. That's when I met him. And I think I preached a, a small church. Uh, there was an outreach with the church he was pastoring. I preached one service uh, right down the street. Never got to preach in the church. But I would meet Pastor David. And let me tell you something. He's one of the most profound speakers that I know that's in North Carolina. Can you shout amen? amen. I told him he ought to be on television. He's so good. Can you shout? If I was on television, they'd have to pan me all over the place because I would sit behind a pulpit. I never have been able to do that since I got the Holy Ghost baptism of fire. Anybody here baptized in fire right now? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let me tell you, the Episcopalians, when they get the fire, and when the Catholics get the fire, and when the regular Protestants get the fire of the Holy Ghost, you're all going to act the same way. Can you shout him in? You're not going to cover it up. When the fire gets hold of you, you're going to do something. That's right. And these signs shall follow them that believe. For years, I thought, the signs of a believer, this had to be concerning those that just believed on Christ, that came to Christ. But if you read the context of Mark 16, he's talking about not those that are carrying the gospel, the signs of all in all together. It was the converts that came to Christ under the auspices of the early disciples that these converts were expected to have five signs. Eventually, after you disciple them. And if you're going to disciple, you're going to have to go to Matthew chapter 28. About we're supposed to disciple, make disciples of, of all nations. So not everybody has the signs following immediately. But eventually, if you hang around some Holy Ghost filled people and a Holy Ghost filled church and a Holy Ghost church that has Holy Ghost services, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and you're going to get filled with the power of God and then the signs will begin to follow you. Do you believe that? Amen. But I've seen so many signs. I've had to travel thousands of miles all the way out to Oregon, Washington, uh, Lima, Peru, West Africa. Got a friend right now that's holding two weeks out in the Gambia in West Africa. Just arrived there Monday or Tuesday. And uh, he's having a tent. He gave a tent to them. And they're so hungry. Most of them, 90% Muslim. I mean, I know he's having a time. Last time he was there, a whole church was started. It's still going on. Can you shout amen? amen. But these signs shall follow them that believe. Notice what he said. In my name. Everybody say, in my name. Right. That means in my delegated authority, or I give you the power of attorney to do 
what I started in under the Father, I'm going to turn it over. The ball's going to be in your lap. And the signs are going to be perpetuated through a body of believers that have called upon the name of the Lord. Anybody here you called on the name of the Lord? That means you right now. The signs are to follow every believer. Do you believe that? I've got a friend that used to live in Robertson. That's where my house is. I'm hardly ever there. I finally mowed the yard after two months, you know. And uh, it's just starting to grow, really. But this pastor was, uh, was pastoring one of the Baptist churches there, and I was attending there. And he got filled with the Holy Ghost, and his wife did too, with the evidence of speaking of tongues while they're going to seminary. That's while I was there. And I was talking to him about some of the events that have been happening um, among this particular Baptist denomination and fellowship that they used to require the missionaries had to find, sign a statement so they would know who they were sporting that they did not speak in tongues. Well, now they've changed it. In the last two years, that particular denomination, they'll let the missionaries go. Whether they speak in tongues or not, they do. They don't stop them, can't you shout amen? Because it just something, something that when you get over to what we call the third world country, of course, I think America's become a third world country. Missional as a missionologist, if you study that way, you know, we have missionaries coming to now to, to bring us to Christ. They're saying about, about six out of every ten churches in America is in a dying state and is closing down. Now, have you read that recently? I have. And they're trying to think of ways of revamping and all these different things. It's not going to happen until we get the Holy Ghost and we get people down on their knees praying again. Can you shout amen? And when we start praying, God is going to turn things around. And you can't pray effectively until you get the sin and the world out of our hearts. And when we get right with God, God's going to heal our land. He promised that in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Do you believe that? God's going to heal our land is when the church judges himself and gets back to their mooring and their walk with God. Come on, and quit playing patty cakes with Jesus and start getting to a place where Jesus hears our prayers and starts turning our captivity around. Come on, give him some praise right now. Lord. In my name. These are the converts that you bring to Christ. You're supposed to lead them into the baptism of the Holy Ghost after they get saved. You don't dare let a convert go to a, a local church and they get saved and you don't even tell them about the power we're supposed to have. Well, they got saved. Well, well, what? They got saved. Now, what type of power do they have? Jesus said in the first chapter of Acts, he said to them, basically, I'm just paraphrasing it, none of you disciples that are gathered and assembled, he spoke to them for 40 days, don't you dare leave town until you get baptized of the Holy Ghost. They'd already been casting out devils. They'd already been healing the sick and winning the lost and anointing with oil everywhere they went. And Jesus said, I want you to shut your ministry down. Close your church services down until every one of you is filled with the precious Holy Ghost. How many believe we need to do that today? So there won't be anybody show up. No one wants to get refilled with the Holy Ghost. That's the problem. We're filled up with other things. And so Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak and gloss up, or that new language. It's known somewhere. They shall speak with new tongues. Have you noticed that he didn't say tongue? He said tongues. Everybody say tongues. Uh, Talks about diverse kinds of tongues. I've been around some people that have been saved, and they just have a little bit of a syllable. I mean, when you get to the Holy Ghost, you'll have so many languages. I mean, the last time I went to Africa, I came back preaching for Johnny Marvers up there, shadowed the cross in Jamesville, planning to preach there tonight. And I would be in prayer. We had a three-week revival there. We just preached on the name of Jesus every night. I mean, miracles were taking place. But I would pray at night in the early hours of the morning before each service. And I'm out there with no music, and I'm going, I'm going through some sort of chant from Africa. It had to be after I got back from West Africa, and it was a, it was languages of the Holy Ghost I have never prayed there or ever spoken before. And I believe I picked it up, hanging around the body of Christ right out there in the Republic of Ben. 
So I want you to know that God wants to give you fresh utterance <laughs> and fresh language where you can intercede, where you can praise, where you can adore the Lord in languages of heaven, languages of angels. And God wants you to have this language not just as evidence, but as a personal devotion, a devotional tool that you can really touch God. And the Holy Ghost can pray for you when you don't know how to pray as you want to pray. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. So, in my name they shall cast out devils. I was sharing with pastor, your pastor some time ago, not just recently, just a few days ago, that when we were out in West, when we were out in uh, Southern Illinois a number of years ago, we had a guy there, we had two other preachers in a church of God on a Monday afternoon in the evening. I'm glad nobody else was in there, but scared him half to death. And this guy had, I don't know how, at least 20 something devils. I didn't know it. I think I shared that with you. I mean, I thought you had to go all the way out to California to cast out these type of devils. I didn't know you'd have them in Southern Illinois. I mean, that's where I've always cast devils out on the West Coast. Devils. But I'm finding out right that the devils, they just seem like they like to go anywhere where everybody leave, that leaves the door open, they'll come inside. Have you noticed that? If you haven't noticed that, you need to shut the door so you don't have to notice them coming in. But anyway, we got this guy on the, on the pew, and I got a chair, a folding chair, sitting in front of him. One of my elders, who's a retired school teacher, was on the left of him, and the pastor of that church, who's an ordained bishop with the Church of God, was on the right. And he acted like there was no big deal to it. But this guy, uh, the pastor that was there, he'd been casting out devils for 40-something years. God gives him the names of the devils, and he calls them by name and tells them to come out. And he doesn't act like it's a big deal. I said, wow. But I didn't know he was like that. But this man that we're dealing with, when he was about 12 years of age, his grandfather molested him and several members of his family violated him. So he had attractions toward the same gender. And he was, you know, probably in his 60s. I think he was an uh, ex-Marine, uh, over, well over six. And he had a son in, the, in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. He's married. He's going to a charismatic type church on the praise team. And he has desires for the pastor. And he's married. And he's had it for years. So he wanted to get delivered. So here we are on a Monday evening. Right there in Cary O'Meara's, Illinois, probably about eight, six years ago. And we're sitting there, and nothing was happening. And so I knew that, you know, my, my spiritual daddy was A.A. A. Allen. I got saved on him through a prayer cloth. The devils were cast out, and I didn't know anything about God. Someone gave me a prayer cloth, and I went to a Assembly God church, and all these devils came out of me, and I got saved. So I know something about the power of God. Can you shout Amen. So I knew I had to initiate something with this man. So I spoke to him very calmly. And I said to him, what is your name? And I mean, these voices began to speak to him through him. We had two other preachers. I'm glad I didn't have to work so hard. I wish Pastor David had been there. But he could watch it at least and analyze it. It probably helped toward his research. But he's seen plenty of it around here. <laughs> Amen. And uh, all these voices, they began to call. We commanded to name themselves. We three preachers at least have six devils apiece, at least. And finally, I got through with that man. We thought we we're there, and you know, you never go to a devil possessed person and say, Devil, how many more devils are in there? They'll just say, Well, we just got one more in here. We don't have any more than that. Well, you know, they're lying. You can't go by lying. You can't go by the, the information of devils. So I went up to him and I said, In Jesus' name. Trying to act like a bunch of you know. The, if you watch it on YouTube, you can watch the way he cast out devils, and he was—it was a real deal in his big tents years ago. I said, "I command you in Jesus' name to tell me how many more devils are inside of you." And this voice began to speak and said, "My name is Cobra." <laughs> I wish I could have recorded this. I would love to have played it in this church, in many churches. People either would run to the altar or get out of there quick and you shout at me because it was scary. So Jesus said, in my name, converse, in my name they shall cast out devils at bellow. That's the word. 
and bellow, fling out, eject. And he said, in my name they shall speak with tongues. Is there anybody here you have that heavenly language once in a while? Amen. We got a few hands going up. And then Jesus goes on and says, and if you drink any deadly thing, if they try to assassinate you. They're talking about our, our, our president. If you want to own him as your president, I just read an article the other day that the way that the swamp is being exposed or cleaned or drained, that uh, he's, on, he's on mark, according to history, to be assassinated if we don't pray for our president. I just read that article the other day. So, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. And then it says, they'll take up serpents. Now, I thought for years that was talking about literal snakes. Out in the mountains of near uh, Kentucky uh, and uh, Alabama toward Georgia, they got snake alley churches. They really do. They speak in tongues, but they take that literally. You take up serpents, and if you've got the faith of God, you can pass it to everybody, hold it, it won't bite you, these rattlesnakes. And I was coming back from the east, from the west coast a number of years ago through the Rockies, and I heard there was one of the Pentecostal preachers there, a snake handler pastor, finally got struck by one and didn't have enough uh, that antivenom to get to him. I don't know if he'd ever been bit. And he died. But you see, we're taking that out of context, taking it out of context by just using one scripture where Paul took up a serpent that came out of the fire when he was gathering the, uh, on, on that island, he was gathering the, the wood to keep the fire. They came out of a, the, the, the boat, went down, it was crashed, and they all got to shore. And Paul took up that serpent and shook it off as it bit him on the wrist. So we think that means taking up serpents. That's not exactly what it's talking about. In context of the Jesus teaching, Jesus said, I'll give you Mount Mark, uh, Luke 10, I'll give you power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. That's what he said. So he's talking <laughs> literally immobilizing demonic powers in the name of Jesus. Come on, raise your hands. We've got power to tread on the dunamis of the devil. That's what it means. The power. That's the word dunamis there. It's not exorcists. And then Jesus goes on and says, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they might recover. Uh -uh. Shall. Shall. They might recover. Uh, shall. Now I want to give you a scripture from the Old Testament. I quoted several from the New Testament. Turn to Psalms Psalm 6, 6, 76. And I'm going to try to read it. <clears throat> yeah, Psalm 76. I appreciate what light we have here. Amen. Oh, that's really good. Thank you. Okay, it's in Psalm 74. Psalm 74. If this is not a picture of the church in America, the institutional church, in our society in America, I don't know what is. It's a parallel of what's happening in our society. And so he goes on and says, the enemy is saying in verse 6, lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy hath done wickedly to the sanctuary. We can call it the church today. Thine enemies that is, that is in the midst of thy congregations they set their ensigns for signs. For signs. Their flags for signs. So the enemy's got signs. A man was famous according as he had lifted up. Yes, yeah, Psalm 74, verse 6, I'm reading 5 now. 
according as he had lifted up upon the thick trees, axes and axes. But now they break down the carved work thereof with axes and hammers. And it goes on and says, verse 9, we see not our, everybody say our, our. signs. And he explains it. There was no more, neither, there is no more pro, any prophet, neither is there any among us that knoweth how long. So God has given the signs of a believer to the church. They didn't have the signs. If it's the Babylonian captivity afterwards, before or after, it looks like it's afterwards, their sanctuary was demolished by the enemy. And the enemy had their own signs. If the devil's group can have signs, how do we wait the church off to have the supernatural signs yes. following yeah. them? That's right. And if you really study the word of God, God has always had a confirmed word. Always a confirmed word. Mark 16, verse 20 says, And they went forth everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the sign, the, the word with signs, as Simeon, following. All five of them. If you study a little bit further, if you go to the 8th chapter of the book of Isaiah, it talks about Jesus prophetically, where he says, I and the children whom God hath given to me, I think it's about verse 12 or 13, are for signs and wonders. And that's quoted in the 2nd chapter of Hebrews, verse 13. But it does not mention, I and the children are for signs and wonders. It just, I and the children whom God hath given me. But verse 4, just back up, it talks about God also bearing witness with them with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. Can you shout amen? So it's in there. Isaiah is in there in that second chapter. It was just broken down when Paul wrote it, if you believe he wrote the book of Hebrews. What God is saying, my children are to be signed, just like Isaiah's two sons were to be signs of what was going to happen to their nation. We are to have the signs of the church. We're to have the signs outside on the streets. We're supposed to have the signs in our home. We're supposed to have the signs of the place of employment. We're supposed to have the signs around our grandchildren. The gifts of the Spirit are to operate in the local church and in the body of believers in every local church. Mm. Yeah. Now we've got a sign. I'm really feeling this right now. Who is that? I can feel it working in your shoulder. I can, it's work. I can feel it. It goes from your neck to your shoulder. Um, come on up here right now in Jesus' name. Amen. That's called the word of knowledge. I need someone to stand behind her. Amen. We won't try to push you down. Or put my foot behind you to make it look like you're going down. <laughs> some people go for it, you can't catch it. Some don't fall. Some shake, some don't shake. Is it your left shoulder? Your yeah, your right shoulder. And are you under a treatment? Or? Yes, sir. What is it? I take uh, steroids shots. Did you get healed the like that healing revival we had here five years ago? You don't play the keyboard. Okay, there's a woman that was, now oh, she's still going here, she's on the keyboard. God healed her. There, God healed her. I don't know, five or six, eight years ago, and she was on the keyboard up there, and God had healed her. I think she had already had that operation, and she was healed, so I don't remember who it was. And so you're on steroids, and, and what is the cause of it? Do they know? Fibromyalgia. Are you, are you ready? I'm ready. Amen. Just raise your hands. We lose you in Jesus. Oh, there it goes. Hey, hey. Yes. There it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Move your arm anyway. I dare you to find any pain. 
move in any way. I dare you to find any pain. Where's the pain? You foul devil loose in Jesus' name. Loose in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's all you need. Move that neck now. How's that? Sounds like that man that got healed in Aberdeen, Mississippi. Talking in strange languages. Hallelujah. There's somebody here. I can feel it. It works on your jaw. I don't know if this is something you put a heart thing, but I can feel it. It's been working on your jaw and it goes down. I don't know what that's all about. Who is that? It works on your jaw and it goes down. But it starts here, the pressure, and just goes down on one side. I can feel it. Come on, let's raise our hands and bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll give you a, a sign that took place. This was, the last time I saw my wife was in April. I've been gone for 10 months. Got back to North Carolina. And uh, I got a call to hold a revival in a place called Sweetwater, Tennessee, which is between Knoxville and Cleveland, out in the boonies. And uh, that was the last time I saw my wife. I talked to her, but I didn't know that would be the last time I saw her. So if you're married, man, get a special time. If you've got a, a, a surviving spouse, treat them right. Can you shout amen? Amen. A lot of churches I'm going to now, we have a bunch of women going. There's no men. We're kind of half and half here. That lets me know that the women had not killed their man. Can you shout amen? <laughs> here. Hallelujah. I go to churches where the men are gone. The women killed were more so. But you got, you got to have and have. That makes me feel good. I'm in a healthy place. But after that revival, we went down to a place uh, right above Montgomery. And I hadn't been to that church for uh, at least a whole year. Uh, affiliated with Richard Hall uh, Overflow. I've preached in some of their churches. And uh, the pastor's wife is walking. She's about 50. You know, I'm past 65. So, you're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, if you're 15 years younger than me or more, she's walking around in with a walker. I said, what in the world on that Sunday morning service? What are you doing with a walker? We pray for her. God healed her. She's out doing things in her yard. She hadn't done it in I don't know how long. Plus, she had a mask as big as her fist on her neck. And so the lady that was with her, I said, I want you to put your hand on that mask on her neck. And we, the congregation, were going to curse it in the name of Jesus. And when we did, it went down, I don't know, it, it, was, it was maybe two inches it was or more on her neck. It went down, I think, about halfway or so. I asked the lady to check it out, so it went down. I said, we're going to curse it again. So we all cursed that growth. I said, where is it now? The woman said it was gone. It disappeared. Can you shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. Come on, raise your hands and bless the Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord through the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember several years ago, and I was out in a place called Summer Hill, Illinois. We had a man come in. This is five, ten years ago. I did not know this would take place. In fact, that pastor did not believe in having revivals anymore because they had a false prophet come in and just about decimated his church and he didn't want any more coming in. But somehow, I got we had a month's revival, a few days each week, and it was snowing, and they don't freak out when it snows in Illinois, you know, like some places. But they buy the stores out, you know, and you can't buy bread. How many know what I'm talking about? But they're not living in hurricane territory either. But this man came in and he had a stroke. I did not know the man. He come from a great distance. I don't know if he was from Missouri or Illinois. We're rest right across from Louisiana, Missouri, right next to just a few miles from the Mississippi River where they're having flooding right now. And uh, we had about five different people show up to get healed that Sunday morning. And this man, uh, before the miracles took place, this wind came into service. This was, I believe, in the month of January. It wasn't the air conditioning. A wind literally came in and those people just start getting healed. And this man, I didn't know from the stroke, I think, it, I don't know if it was his left eye, I believe it was his left eye, he could not see. And I said, man, what's happened to you? He changed his countenance. He says, I'm seeing it, can't you shout amen? amen. My blind eye, I can see now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're gonna close, we're gonna close. Thank you for letting me come past.
pastor, I can preach for you know a couple of hours. Yeah. I don't want to go work and man, we go and they don't want to get out for four o'clock at night. I'm serious. And that's the most, most liberal state there is. You know, Oregon and Washington. They don't have a belt there. They don't have a Bible belt. You're doing good people believe the Bible there. But they are believers there. Something about somebody's me. Who is that? Someone's me. I'm just getting that right now. Someone's me. I don't know if you chipped your knee, you hurt your knee. About somebody's knee. Anybody here in the leg area, you got something wrong, your knee is catching, or I just got that. Amen. Now I can't be a false prophet. I have to be a I have to be a false evangelist, can Because I'm not a prophet. I don't want to be a prophet. They're too mean. Can you shout amen? Amen. Amen. Also, something in the area like a spur. Whew, I feel that right. My, my, I felt that. That about hit me. Whew, did you feel that? Something about a spur on someone. Yeah, I can feel it right now. Get up here. I, that's here. That's here. Hallelujah. Someone stand behind, behind pastor right now. Amen. Someone stand behind pastor. I got a degree in the practical, so we're going to be practical today, this morning. <laughs> Amen. They fall, they get hurt, they can, well, it's because you didn't have the things ready. Some people fall, then they want to sue you, but they fall in the church. That's a trip. So you need to have catchers for that very reason. And then and you're saying, what's wrong with the knee? It just started two days ago. Isn't that strange? God knows two days ago. I mean, usually you think he's got he's to know it for at least a couple of months before he can be called out. But he's, he's concerned detail. He's a detailed father. Yes, he, I mean, he cares how many hairs you have. He even cares about little things like that, which is a big thing if, if you want to keep your health up. Thank you, Father. There it goes. We just There goes the power of God. Just, brother, Pastor, just raise your hands up and let the Holy Spirit do the work. I'm not a healer. I don't claim to be a healer. I don't claim to have the gifts of healing. But they come from, oh, there they go. Be healed in Jesus' name. Whew. That's all you need. Glory to God. Would you all stand in Jesus' name? Amen. Some of them are getting ready for the food out there. I, I haven't eaten since yesterday, so I'm hungry. I don't know if you're supposed to eat over there or not. But what I want to do, these signs shall follow them believe. Notice, by the imposition of imposition of hands. That's a big word. The doctrine of laying on of hands. Hebrews chapter 6. That's a major doctrine. And it's called ABCs. It's ABC stuff. The laying on of hands. Imparting the Holy Spirit. Healing the sick. Uh, holding up the rod of God. And dividing the Red Sea. But through your hands. Put your hands in it. Becomes leprous. That is not the only way that God can heal. But it's a major way. Old or New Testament. I would. The leper said. The leper said I would. The prophet would put his hands on me. And I would recover. Name of the Syrian. So he expected. And you know what? My preacher down in. Carl Strader. One of the largest churches. Central Florida at one time. He interpreted this way. Elijah just told. Elisha. Elisha. Elisha just told. Name of the Syrian. Just go jump in a river. And it was seven times. That's not the only way that God can heal. Right. But the man expected hands to be laid on him. And he didn't want to get in the dirty river. He thought they were too dirty. it was too dirty to go to the Jordan. That they had better rivers than, than, that, than, that, than, than the prophet was offering. Well, whatever God says, I would do it. Yeah, that's right. But there's a healing right now. There's healing. I've got a prophet. She's one of the prophets in my life out in the near Kentucky line and she's believing she's healed. She refuses to get a bypass. She's already had one and they want to do some more. She's just believing. And she refuses. And she, I think she preached this morning. I said, I'm standing with you. Can you shout amen? amen? Nobody can make you go to the hospital and nobody can make you stay at the hospital. If you want to, God can work there. But one thing about it, your faith will get through for God if you really believe God will come through. Amen. If there's anybody here you want to be healed, of any malady the Lord has not given me. Amen. I felt that like a spur thing on someone's foot. Maybe they've already left. 
Amen. We have seen backs. We've seen braces taken off. People heal permanently. Back problems. God can put a Holy Ghost steel rod in your back where you can be able to lift things you haven't lifted. We've seen scores of that. I mean, they picked me up. You see me do that here. Anybody here, you have any sort of weakness in your back. You're not able to bend. You're not able to pick up like you used to. Well, the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord, they'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. God said in Psalms 103, He said He didn't renew your youth like an eagle. He said He forgive all of your sins and He heals all your diseases. Do you believe it? Yes. A double cure for the curse upon man from the fall. Someone says sickness is incipient death. That's what a medical doctor used. Sickness is incipient death. It means it's slow death. If we're going to age, let's age biblically. You don't have to be run out, wore out, and go out. You can be like Moses. Full strength at 120. Eyesight not going to, going to God drip dim. And God buried him. And of course, Moses' father lived longer than him. You think about that. So we don't have to let the devil take us out. If we're going to leave and go out, let's go because we're through. Let's go because we're through. Let's gather around. Would you come around the moment? Just around the front just for a moment. Amen. Just around for a moment. I do sense there's someone here with a back condition. I'm really picking that up. I got that. There's someone here with a back condition. I know you're here because I really, I'm getting that. Amen. Amen. And what's the matter with your back? And you're still having difficulties. Major. Pain. Are you ready? The only reason that you're going to get healed because for one reason, Jesus loves you. It's a simple theology. Just because he loves you, he bore your sicknesses. Read Isaiah 53. He bore your sicknesses and your sins away. Put them away. He carried them. What's easier to say, thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. In other words, I heal and I forgive. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And if he's committed any sins, James 5, it'll be forgiven. You know, there are some sins we can do. Generational things that we're practicing, and it comes in our family through our seed to the third and fourth generation. I don't want to get into all the generational curses. But one thing about it, the blood of Jesus Christ can break anything that's been passed on from our family to us. Whew, I felt that. Did you feel what I just, I felt that. It's just like a, a, a current of power just went out when I just spoke that. Just, can you raise your hands just a little bit anyway? Heal, oh Lord. Thou son of David, have mercy upon this man. And live by gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of healing, correct? And may this man have such a wellness and wholeness and health in his body, he won't even know they've done that operation. We thank God for medical doctors, they helped us. But Lord, there's nobody can heal like you. Heal, oh my brother, be healed in the name of oh, Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Where's the pain?
Amen. Amen. Are you raising your hand to be healed? Just pray. What do you need to be healed of? Yes. Just the, uh, you were talking about the D earlier. It didn't bother me until I come up here. That sounds like a devil. <laughs> Get out of here, devil. But Lord, we just say to you, heal with healing virtue. Jesus' name. Through the anointing. Oh, there it is. I felt that, Lord Jesus. Like electricity. You need to be healed. Well, I can tell you how to do that. It's according to the Bible, James. And I'm not saying you're not trying. He said, resist the devil. And he'll what? He'll flee from you. So, how do you get the enemy out where he's being enrolled? You gotta close the door. And when you close the door, there's only one way you can do that. It's got to be sealed by the blood of Jesus. God locked him in for seven days before the flood came. Jesus is our ark with the blood. And I'm not saying you're not calling upon Jesus. There it is. Just raise your hands right now. There's your healing right now. Say, Jesus, I accept your blood afresh. Close all doors. I repent. Anything. There it goes in Jesus' name. You heard this man. Heal, oh Lord, heal this man. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who's that person? I still feel this back. Who is that? It's about someone's back. I don't know if you strained your back, something happened. I know years ago when I lived in West Tennessee, I was trying to pull these really small trees up. And I mean, I couldn't bend over for a whole week. And the truck that I have, I'm a truck, I like to drive trucks. I don't have a truck. I think, I think you're a man when you got a truck, can't you shout again? And you don't have to go to Alabama to have them either. But they have them there. And I just could not bend. And I mean, I couldn't sit on the pot. I couldn't get up it was so bad. I know it's like I had that for over a week. And I'm trying to look up one of my, my wife's cousins, and he's in a wheelchair. And it messed me up. What's, what's wrong with your back? Bad this. A bad test. Come over here. You believe Jesus Christ can put a brand new this in there? Why don't you believe such a thing? Because I believe in Him. You believe He's a creator. And how long do you have this condition or how long have you been diagnosed with it? A number of years. I've had several shots. And so when you walk around, does it hurt? When you get up, does it hurt? When you get up, when you got up from the from the uh, the upholstered posh. Does it hurt when you got up? Father, come on here. What'd you do if I told you you gave up and you just got healed? <laughs> Sit down. Now get up. I dare you to find any pain. Now get up. Where's the pain?
send our love to you on the wheels of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, heal this man. If I say, Jesus, heal this man. If it's your will, extend his life like you did Hezekiah. We rebuke the spirit of death in Jesus' name. Lord, turn it around for this man or for a testimony. Unless you have other plans, turn it around from this hour in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you believe we had a woman? She's been healed five years at least. It blew my mind. Their church is in a garage. Now he's got another location. He takes people off the street. Some of them sleep in the church. They have nowhere to go. And uh, he's a prison minister all together. And he's an ex-wrestler of the pastor. I, like, I love to go there. We had a woman there, I guess about four years ago. She had no feeling from her hips on both legs down to her feet. No feeling. So when she would walk, she would, because she couldn't feel it. Now, when you're walking around, you don't feel anything. You know, where's your equilibrium? You don't even feel something you're standing on. And God totally healed her. Instantly, she's still healed. All the feeling came back, both of her legs, her hip down. It was all, I don't know what she did to herself. Completely healed. Are you ready? They used to say this. They don't do this anymore. We've got too many fancy cars. The car out there is this 2003 given to me in Oregon. Went out there by faith. It's still good. Until God gives me a new one. You want to buy me one? Go ahead. <laughs> but they used to say when you get your car fixed up, some, some cars need, a, need an overhaul. That's what you need. Are you ready? My Jesus can fix it for you now. Can you just raise your hands just a little bit? To, and, and acknowledge acknowledgement and reverencing Him because He is your healer. Healing is your to be paid for your physical healing. You have a right to be healed because He bore it. If He didn't bore it, it wasn't in the atonement. We wouldn't have a right to expect it, which is without the atonement, but it's within the atonement. So He carried your sins and sins away. Father, when I lay hands on this man, I want you to give him a brand new back. I want you to heal this man's shoulders. I want you to restore all the feeling and everything else he has not mentioned that earlier. Yeah. I want you to heal this man totally. Everybody stretch your hands toward him. Say, in Jesus' name, Jesus. We, command we command you to be healed. And we command all your sickness and permanency to leave. In Jesus' name, we command it now. No feeling? Do you have feeling in your feet at all? Well, I'm stepping on. Don't kick me now. Can you feel that? Okay. Do you have feeling? Did you have feeling in your legs? Or just a little bit? A little bit. Can you tell the difference already? I'm not trying to get you to lie. I just want to see if you can. Amen. Well, we just thank God they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There's somebody here about digestion. Woo, I'm picking that up. <laughs> Someone about digestion when you eat. I'm really seeing that. I'm that's called acid reflux. I'm getting that now. My, 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 my. Just come over here, right here. Just stay right there. Put your hands out like that. Lord, give the gifts of healing. Now place your hand about where your throat is and your stomach. Heal for the gifts of healing. Jesus' name. Be cured. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's raise our hands and thank God for his mercy. Anybody here, you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you do not pray in that prayer language. Let me tell you, you can be a Baptist, a physical pain, I don't care. If you're born again, this prayer language is already within you and needs to be released. When you don't know how to pray, because you want to pray, it's the most, it saved my life. I'm out on these more, I'm going to go and I start praying to the Holy Ghost, and I know what to do. Anybody?
like you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You've never spoken in that heavenly language. Anybody here? Anybody here? You've never had that prayer language. You've never spoken that language. I guess everybody has. Well, praise God. You haven't? But you're born again? You? Yes. Someone stand behind me. Just raise your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. How long have you been born again? Well, I feel like I can't go my life. Well, we know it started somewhere, though. But Jesus said in, in John 4, He said, when you get born again, that's what He's teaching you. You have an large teacher you well inside of you, a well of water. Well, then all wells and springs eventually will go into a river. Jesus said, out of your innermost being, your belly shall go in rivers of water. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to ask God to release the Holy Spirit that's already in your life. The same Holy Ghost that will give you the ability to speak in tongues is the same Holy Ghost that's inside. When you got born again, he just, he just, he just gets a greater volume. So if you're looking for something out there, forget it. It's already in there. And they, the Bible said they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And who did the speaking? They did the speaking. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. The utterance is in there, but you've got to speak it out. Now I'm not telling what to say. But receive you the Holy Ghost, the prayer language. Give her the prayer language, I pray, O oh Father. Let that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit within her, now become rivers. Coming up, coming up, coming up. There's a new language inside of you. Just speak it out. I'm not telling you what to say, but don't speak in English. Let that language, he'll give you syllables. That is your prayer language. It's been there a long time. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Some of you got something about ringing in your ear or like a numbing. I'm getting that right now. Get over here. Hallelujah. We're cleaning the house. Can you shout it in? I didn't know it. And then we got less. What's wrong? Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. Yeah, that's good. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Jim. Thank you, God. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. God is so awesome. All the time. Remember, number one, just thank God. You gotta thank God. When God does something, we gotta thank Him. Amen. 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 True faith. True faith always ends in a thank you, Lord. Amen. Also, a lot of chickens gave their life for you to have lunch today. <laughs> Go over there and get you, get you a chicken plate. It's free of charge. Go over there. Brother
gym and I go there because you know, in, in preaching school, I was taught to eat three things. Chicken, barbecue, and crow. <laughs> a lot of crow. Amen. But you know, again, you know why I preach it. I told you all this time. You know, preachers eat chicken all the time, don't you? It's revenge on that rooster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brother Brandon, we just miss us in prayer.